Singapore's port moves one-fifth of the world's containers through five overloaded, scattered terminals, and soon even that will not be enough. Now the city-state is betting $20 billion on a gamble, building a fully automated megaport from scratch on land reclaimed from the sea designed to double capacity and reshape the future of global trade. But why risk everything on one colossal facility? And what happens if it fails? The answer begins with how this tiny island became the world's pivotal shipping hub. At the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula, Singapore sits at the entrance to one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, the Malacca Strait. Every year, one quarter of global trade slips past its shores, drawn by geography as much as by policy. The island's natural deep harbor, recognized by British colonial planners in 1819, quickly transformed it into a vital node for ships traveling between Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. Long before skyscrapers and supertankers, the port defined Singapore's identity. After independence in 1965, facing a future without oil, minerals, or farmland, Singapore's leaders doubled down on the sea. If the country could not export resources, it would move the world's goods instead. The Maritime and Port Authority and PSA International became the institutional stewards of this strategy, building a business model where containers from every continent are unloaded, sorted, and sent back out, sometimes within hours. Today, Singapore handles about 20% of all global container transshipment. The port alone accounts for 7% of the nation's GDP and supports more than 170,000 jobs. This relentless focus on efficiency and connectivity has kept Singapore ahead of rivals for decades. But the very success of this model now brings new challenges, as the island's limited land and fragmented terminals strain to keep pace with the demands of modern shipping. Five container terminals, Tanjong Pagar, Keppel, Brani, Pasir Panjang, and Sembawang, dot the coastline of Singapore, each operating as its own island within a city pressed for space. Together, they form a patchwork that once powered Singapore's rise, but now threaten to slow it down. Trucks hauling containers between terminals clog the city's roads, burning hours and fuel, just to link up fragmented operations. The island's footprint, just 734 square kilometers, leaves little room to expand. Every additional hectare claimed for shipping means sacrificing land that could house people or businesses in the heart of the city. Capacity is now brushing against its ceiling. Even with upgrades, the combined terminals can handle no more than 50 to 55 million 20-foot equivalent units a year. As global trade surges and cargo ships grow ever larger, the cracks are widening. The latest mega ships some carrying more than 24,000 containers at once, demand deeper berths and longer quays than many of Singapore's existing terminals can offer. When these giants arrive, the limits of depth and length turn into costly delays. For workers, the changes are personal. Some who once drove trucks between scattered terminals now find themselves learning new skills as the port prepares for a future that demands more than muscle and grit. The old system, once a symbol of Singapore's ingenuity, has become a bottleneck. Without a radical redesign, the port risks falling behind in a race where speed and scale are everything. At the far western edge of Singapore, a new coastline is taking shape. Here, on 1,337 hectares of reclaimed land, the Tuas Megaport rises as the largest infrastructure project in the nation's history. The numbers alone are staggering. $20 billion in investment, 26 kilometers of continuous key, and berths deep enough, over 20 meters, to welcome the world's biggest container ships. The master plan unfolds in four phases, each one carefully sequenced to keep Singapore's trade moving as construction advances. Phase one opened in 2021, with 21 berths already handling cargo by 2027, Phase 2 will bring the total to 42 berths, 
Later phases will push capacity to 66 berths and up to 65 million TEUs a year, almost double what the island manages today. Direct rail links are woven into the layout, designed to shift cargo off city roads and speed up connections inland. Every detail, from the length of the quay to the depth of the harbor, is engineered for scale and future growth. For the engineers behind to us, this is not just a port. It is a blueprint for how a small island can remain at the center of global trade. Rows of driverless vehicles called Automated Guided Vehicles, or AGVS, glide across the container yard at Tuas Megaport, a showcase of automation moving cargo day and night without a single person in the driver's seat. Over 200 AGVS, guided by a 5G wireless backbone and orchestrated by artificial intelligence, carry containers from ship to stack with precision. Ship to shore cranes, once operated from high up in the cab, are now controlled remotely from a climate-controlled command center miles away. Operators monitor dozens of cranes at once, using real-time data to adjust for weather, traffic, and vessel schedules. The heart of the port is a digital brain, an artificial intelligence-powered terminal operating system that tracks every container, predicts bottlenecks, and assigns jobs to machines on the fly. This system keeps the entire operation humming, with minimal downtime and almost no manual intervention. For workers, the transformation is profound. Thousands have left behind the physical demands of yard work to retrain as maintenance engineers, software technicians, or data analysts. PSA's training programs are full, with former crane drivers learning to diagnose AGV faults or manage cyber-physical networks. The port's new workforce is as likely to carry a laptop as a wrench. Automation has not erased the human presence. It has shifted it from the docks to the digital nerve center where Singapore's future in shipping is being written line by line. Beneath Tuas Megaport's concrete and steel lies a foundation built almost entirely from the sea, creating 1,337 hectares of new land demanded a feat of engineering and a supply chain stretching far beyond Singapore's borders. Hundreds of millions of tons of sand, the raw ingredient for reclamation, were sourced and shipped in. Much of it from Cambodia and Myanmar, after Malaysia and Indonesia imposed export bans. Each grain is a reminder of scarcity and controversy, as riverbanks erode and deltas sink in the wake of extraction upstream. The process begins with massive seawalls, nine kilometers long in phase two alone, designed to withstand monsoon waves and rising sea levels. Once the perimeter is set, hydraulic pumps fill the basin with imported sand, layer by layer, until a new shoreline emerges. Engineers reinforce the ground with deep soil compaction, preparing it to bear the weight of cranes and stacked containers but every hectare gained at Tuas comes at a cost. Coral colonies are relocated, artificial reefs are built, and monitoring programs track marine recovery. Yet the ecological balance remains fragile. For scientists, the trade-offs are stark. Singapore's future as a maritime hub is being carved from ecosystems that may never fully recover. When the last container leaves Tanjong Pagar Terminal, in the late 2020s, more than 1,000 hectares of prime waterfront will be unlocked at the edge of Singapore's downtown. This land, just steps from the central business district in Marina Bay, is valued in the tens of billions. The Urban Redevelopment Authority's master plan calls for the Greater Southern Waterfront, a new district blending homes, offices, parks, and public spaces along six kilometers of coastline. For city planners and economists, this is a once-in-a-century chance to reshape the heart of Singapore. The former port zone will become a canvas for high-density living, green corridors, and commercial clusters, all designed to keep Singapore globally competitive. As the cranes move west, the city gains room to grow, 
and the stakes of the port project extend far beyond shipping lanes and container counts. Shanghai moves more containers than any port on Earth, around 50 million 20-foot equivalent units a year. Singapore, at 41 million, sits just behind, but the gap is narrowing. In China, ports like Shenzhen and Ningbo Jushan are scaling up rapidly, targeting both domestic and transshipment traffic. Across the strait, Malaysia is racing to lure shipping lines with lower tariffs at Port Klang and Tanjung Pelopus, where rates can drop below $90 per container move, nearly a third less than Singapore's. Yet speed and reliability remain Singapore's strongest weapons. TUAS's automation delivers the fastest vessel turnaround in the region, with mainline ships often clearing in under 36 hours. For global carriers, every hour saved at berth is money banked. But if Malaysian ports close the efficiency gap and shippers start to favor cost over reliability, Singapore's dominance could slip. The region's ports are not just rivals. They are reminders that in global trade, advantage is always temporary. Singapore's $20 billion gamble is not just about ports. It is about who shapes the arteries of global trade. As automation and competition accelerate, every container that passes through to us will test the city's resolve to stay indispensable. In the race for relevance, the future docks here first.